Hi, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner based here in Singapore. Thank you for tuning into the video today. What I'd like to share with you in this video is why you should not consider moving to Singapore and becoming an expat. I've shared a lot in the past in my blog posts and videos and various other uh, social media posts and everything else, why it's such a valuable experience to become an expat. But what I'd like to share with you in this video is some of the reasons that you should maybe reconsider it not consider it at all, or not consider it just yet. Really to make sure that you can make the most of the experience if it is something that you are considering. So let's dive right in. I'll share a little bit about my story and then we'll get into the reasons that you might not want to consider becoming an Aussie expat in Singapore. Now, personally, I've been in Singapore for nearly 10 years. I'm in my 10th year now. Perth in Western Australia is originally home. And thankfully, we are in the same time zone. It's a very short, in most, uh, most times, relatively inexpensive flight to get back to Perth and obviously back to Singapore as well. So it makes life relatively easy and relatively simple. And naturally, working in finance, we get to work with some great Australian expats in Singapore and right across the globe. So it's a fantastic place for both myself, uh, my wife, and naturally my profession as well. But when might you consider not moving to Singapore? What are some of the things to watch out for? Or what are some of the reasons that you might decide to delay the choice to move abroad? Let's have a look at some of these now. First and foremost, affordability is one of the big considerations when it comes to Singapore. Life is expensive, rent is expensive, cars are expensive, dining can be very expensive, although there are many cheap options, but it's certainly not one of the cheapest places that you can live. So if you're simply looking for a relatively inexpensive tax base for your business, or you're a low to middle income earner in Australia and not really looking for that to change, then chances are Singapore is not going to be the best choice for you. And you may want to consider if you are looking at moving to Asia, a, a lower cost of living uh, destination. Maybe that's Bali, maybe that's somewhere in Thailand or elsewhere in Indonesia. But there are chances are there are better and more affordable options to consider in the region. So that's number one. The second and very closely related to this is if only one spouse can actually work in Singapore. The working visa requirements are relatively strict in Singapore <clears throat> and gone are the years where someone coming up as a dependent on a dependent pass was easily allowed to work. Now that's become a lot harder. <clears throat> Minimum income requirements for an employment pass, that is a work visa, are also increasing year on year. So it does make things a little more challenging to get your visa if both partners are not going to work here, again, affordability is certainly a consideration, but it's not just about affordability, it's also considering lifestyle. How are you going to build your network, build your friends, uh, get to meet other people if you're not working in Singapore? Thankfully, there are a lot of great networks. We've got ANSA, we've got Ozcham, we've got lots of other social groups in Singapore, whether it's sports or other social activities. But again, just an important one to consider if only one partner is planning to work in Singapore. Now, staying with our theme of costs of living in Singapore and even costs of moving, there are a few other things to consider here. Firstly, we've got school fees. Private school fees in Singapore range anywhere from 15,000 at the, at the very low end, right through to about 45,000. <clears> These figures increase quite rapidly year on year. And uh, a lot of the private schools, as I speak, have already closed their applications to, uh, for August intake of 2023. And we're currently in late 2022. So demand is very strong. We're seeing a lot more expats move into Singapore. So the likelihood that these school fees are going to come down, I think is a bit of a pipe dream. So if you're used to public school fees in Australia, or even a relatively expensive private school, certainly do some planning here, consider what impact this will have on your budget and if the decision to move still makes sense. The other big cost you've got to consider 
are the costs of actually relocating to Singapore, i.e. physically picking the family up and shifting over to Singapore. You might have shipping costs of your furniture, um, any other goods, etc., that you need to bring to Singapore. When you rent a condo or a house in Singapore, in most cases, you need to provide two months rent as a bond and then prepay your first month's rent. Now, if you're looking at a $5,000 a month rental, which is relatively modest in today's market, that's another $15,000 that you've got to have saved just to move into your property. So again, these costs can quickly add up. Uh, when we look at shipping containers and shipping goods and furniture over, again, these costs can be anywhere from 10 to 25,000. If you're relocating pets, this is uh, quite an exorbitant cost in many scenarios. Again, the cost of relocating pets from Australia into Singapore can range anywhere from five to $20,000. So you could very easily be looking at anywhere from 25 to 50,000 without really blinking an eye, just to shift the family to Singapore. Now, if your employer is paying and you're relocating with your company, or you're taking on a role with an employer and they're gonna cover all of these costs, wonderful. Not really something you need to worry too much about, but if you're running your own business or you're having to fork, you know, foot the bill for this one, certainly an important one to consider, particularly if you're thinking that you're only going to be here for a couple of years at the very most. The next key consideration is if you have older family members in Australia. <clears throat> we see a lot of Australian expats relocate back to Australia as their parents or as their other family members are getting older. Uh, they might need to go into aged care, into nursing homes. Um, they may be sort of getting into those later years in life. A lot of the time, uh, Australian expats, a lot of our clients, will want to be close to their family at this time. Now, I mentioned earlier, Perth is only a short flight away, but it is still a flight. It does mean that you still need to pack up the family, jump on a plane and fly home to see the family, rather than just hopping in the car and driving down the road. So an important one to consider uh, when it comes to your own family ties, your own relationships with your family, and what everyday life looks like with your family members. The final key consideration and final reason that you may not want to consider Singapore uh, or becoming an Australian expat is if you work for the Australian government and you plan on continuing to work for the Australian government, meaning that you will remain a tax resident of Australia. Now, it might be an excellent stepping stone, an excellent move for your career to go and take a post in Singapore. And if that's the case, and that's a very real consideration for you, then it may still be a very sensible move. But we know that a lot of people move to Singapore or certainly treat one of the key considerations and key benefits is the ultra low tax rates that we all get to experience and enjoy in Singapore. There is no capital gains tax. We have a top marginal tax rate in the low 20%, which is fantastic. So it means that somebody who's earning a quarter of a million dollars will be paying less than 15% personal income tax in most instances, compared to 35 to 45% back in Australia as a net effective tax rate. Again, as I said, tax and savings and money is not the be all and end all when it comes to relocating to Singapore, but certainly a very important consideration when it comes to your tax residency. So certainly one to seek some advice on and certainly one to do a bit of planning for if you do work for the Australian government and are planning to relocate here to Singapore uh, whilst remaining in the employ of the Aussie government. Now, if you have any questions at all about why you should or shouldn't move to Singapore as an Australian expat, what some of the pros and cons are, how they relate to your scenario, please do re reach out to me, drop me a note in the comments. More than happy to have a chat about how you can plan for your relocation or what life could look like for you in Singapore. Potentially, it's a case of not right now, but not never. And maybe it's a case of just designing a bit of a roadmap so that you can prepare your family, prepare your finances to become expats in Singapore or potentially even somewhere else. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you found this helpful. Again, please like, subscribe to the channel and I look forward to seeing you next time.